cop, the book, the good cop. Um, a lot of cases are, are, are described through it, uh, many of which are, are very well known. But one thing that came through to me that I wasn't aware of, and I've, I've watched you from afar and known you for a fair while, uh, you actually dealt with crooks differently. Did you... You seemed, in, in fact, to have uh, a friendship with a very well-known ex-crook at the time, Chopper Reed. Did you have friendships with, poli- with, with criminals? No, I think at times I had a professional relationship and I always keep the line of communication open. Was uh, Chopper a friend, though? No, Chopper wasn't a friend. Um, I had meals at a local hotel in Collingwood with my family where he uh, often would be. I would be uh, rung by interstate detective saying, we want to see him. Uh, I would arrange um, an interview if it needed to be. And then from time to time, he would ring me and say, what should I do about my passport? What should I do about this? And if I could assist, I assisted. You went to see him days before he was dying, and even then you were questioning him about... Well, not question, that's not fair, it sounds cruel, but you were talking to him about crime. Um, he wanted to see me before um, he died, and I saw him two days before he died in the, the Royal Melbourne Hospital. Uh, everything that I did with him I documented, and it is documented in my diary, and I did ask him, are there any crimes that you want to tell me about that you've done uh, before you pass? And he said no, and then he told me the story how he had embellished four murders um, for another TV station. Did you like him? But he, he, he sort of got this image of a likeable rogue, even though he'd been an awful crook over the years, hadn't he? He uh, had a criminal history. Um, yes, he was a likeable person, uh, but he's not the only uh, criminal who, from time to time, reached out to me. Why? Why did they do it? I think to some, some extent I always tried to see um, uh, good in bad people and, you know, there's a classic where I, uh, Bruce Nichols, I charged with a murder in 1980, he did 25 years uh, imprisonment. The day he got out, he picked up the phone and he rang me and we went and had a coffee. And he thanked me for the time that he'd spent in jail. And from that time on, on and off, uh, we would have a coffee. He would ring me up if he needed assistance or he would ring up if he wanted any advice. Did you ever deal with a killer or a criminal who you felt uh, had absolutely no redeeming features, was just evil? Oh, there was one, and uh, I can talk about him because he's deceased, Lee Patrick Tawney. I charged him with a murder in 1981. He was somebody who went on and killed again, uh, and I always saw him as bad and evil, uh, and um, he was someone who I probably was uh, scared of. Really? Yeah. What, do you think he could personally hurt you? Uh, I worked with Brian McCarthy at the time, and we both formed the same view that he was someone who, if you ever bumped into the street, he would be very vindictive, or he might try and find where you lived. And he was the only one, I think, in my whole career that I probably um, put a question mark over. How do you live with that, the the prospect that somebody could come after, well, not just you, your family? Uh, I think family, you try to be uh, sacrosanct. There were times um, throughout my career where the house was um, guarded because... Uh, when I was at St Kilda, someone had threatened to um, kill me over um, a major drug bust. Um, so, yeah, they are things which uh, concern you, uh, but more so your family. Who did Tawny kill? Tawny killed Sydney Graham up at uh, Yarra Junction in uh, 1981. And then went on to kill again? He went on to kill again, and then uh, in about 2000, he was killed up at Meribur and put in a mine shaft. Ah, yes.